Today I'm going to be talking about the regeneration of an existing Olympic tennis stadium, the Ken Roswell Arena. By approaching this project with a digital mindset and adopting a non-traditional approach to delivery, we were able to design a World Cup stadium within a super tight time frame. Ken Roswell Arena was constructed for the 2000 Sydney Olympic Games. It was built as an open-air stadium with a capacity of 10,000 seats. We enclosed this originally open-air stadium with a 100-metre spanning cable net roof in order to prepare the venue for the inaugural ATP Tennis World Cup. The existing building is circular, is circular in plan and spans 100 metres. The original building was comprised of a lower tier, an upper tier and a canopy roof. For this project, we left the lower tier as is and the upper tier was our point of focus. The pre-cast, pre-stressed concrete bowl was supported on raking steel beams. The structural system was a braced frame supported on powered foundations. The tip of the raking beam was lifted from above with a tie force to the upper primary tension ring. The clever approach of hanging the raking beam from above gave the stadium its signature appeal. By creating a dramatic cantilevering effect. Of all the Olympic facilities, the Ken Roswell Arena had special recognition by being awarded the Sir John Salmon Award for Excellence in Public Architecture. Our client wanted to bring new life to this award-winning stadium by transforming it into an all-weather, dual-purpose venue for both netball and tennis. Maintaining the original design integrity by minimizing strengthening works was key to delivering a low-carbon, world-class design within a tight time frame. We utilized the circular form of the original building and designed a lightweight cable net roof to replace the existing canopy roof. The roof behaves similarly to a traditional bicycle wheel. We have a pair of outer compression rings connected with tensile cables to a pair of inner tension rings. The roof is clad with PTFE. There are two forms of cables. We have the sagging cable that is, res that is responsible for taking the dead load of the roof and the hogging cable which resolves any uplift forces and defines the form of the roof. The benefits of this solution is that it retains the design logic of the existing structure by supporting the back of the bowl with the new compression ring. The program was tight. We commenced the design in January and within four months we had delivered the detailed design. Another six months later and the stadium had opened its doors to the ATP Cup. It would not have been so it wouldn't have been possible to meet this tight deadline without adopting a non-traditional approach to design and delivery. We used three key tools to develop our workflow. We used Rhino, Grasshopper and GSA. From the beginning of the project, the design was kept solely in a 3D environment. The existing geometry was parametrically defined, the cable drape was form found, and the analysis model was automatically created. Our workflow meant that it was extremely fast to reanalyze varying geometries. As a byproduct of adopting this digital workflow, we were able to automate our member sizing and develop 3D connections. We shared the form found geometry with the architect via Grasshopper scripts, and we issued the preset geometry to the fabricator for shop detailing. Every aspect of the roof was optimized for a particular purpose. The key geometric drivers, such as the tension ring diameter, the drape of the cables, and the height of the compression rings, were all parametrically defined and optimized in Grasshopper. Thanks to the digital workflow, for each iteration of geometric changes, we would instantly get a new analysis model. The structural model was parametrically defined in Grasshopper. The analysis was staged in order to consider the locked-in stresses of the original construction and the roof was form found in GSA using non-linear dynamic relaxation effects. The digital process was used to automate member design as well as to inform connection design. We made 3D models of all of the connections and these models were used to create finite element analysis for all of the critical connections. The 3D modeling of the connections enabled us to deliver the design in a non-traditional way. From the beginning of the project, we had agreed with the client that no traditional drawings would be issued. And instead, we would deliver everything in a 3D environment. We took images of our 3D models and marked up all of the key structural features. These markups, in addition to the 3D models, were sent to the fabricators. 
It was the planning and the execution of this digital workflow which allowed us to progress from concept design through to analysis, detailed design and documentation within only four months. The digital delivery meant that the design was not compromised for quality. And it meant that there was more time on site to construct and commission the World Cup Stadium. The demolition started in July, and by December, the cable net had been constructed and commissioning was well underway. By avoiding demolition and reconstruction, we were able to regenerate and repurpose an underutilized Olympic Stadium. We designed a highly efficient, lightweight structure that was optimized to meet the client's requirements. The key design features allowed us to deliver a low carbon solution. We used Arup's embodied carbon calcul calculator to get a rough idea of the saving in embodied carbon that we would achieve by regenerating the existing building and adopting a lightweight solution. You can see here that the combined bowl and roof has an embodied carbon of 2.9 million kilograms of CO2, compared with only 1.2 million for the roof alone. There was a significant saving in retaining the existing bowl and optimizing the design. As you can see in this photo from the ATP Cup semifinals, we have given this stadium a new life, and it was the digital processes and delivery which allowed us to achieve a high quality design within the 12 month timeframe.